It's almost time for the Super Bowl. I thought it would be fun to wood turn a football. <laughs> so in looking at football closely, it's actually a little more complicated than just a football shape. There's the stitching pattern, and there's the pattern of the panels that make up the football and the way that those go together. So I needed wood for the main body of the ball, and I have some cherry that I cut years and years ago, and it's just about the right amount, and it'd be really nice to just use this up. Now, it being cherry, it's warped quite a bit because it's dried, so it took some work getting it flat and straight. So I jointed it and planed it and got it down to about a one inch dimension. Then I cut square strips from that cherry. I'll make the main body of the ball out of stacked up rings. So I can use these strips to make those rings. Now I have a sled that has two fences on it for cutting the segments for the rings. The idea with this sled with the two fences is that the angle for the segments is the difference in the angle between the two fences. So you cut one side of the segment on one fence and the other side of the segment on the other fence. So if you can use something that you know has the angle that you need, like a 30 degree triangle to make 12 segments, and that angle is super accurate, you'll get a ring that goes together without any gaps and it makes it really easy to set up and know that you're gonna be precise. And I made a distance gauge that lets me set the length of each of the segments. And the length of the segments determines the size of the rings. So it's just a matter of doing a drawing that will give you the relationship between the length of the segment and the size of the ring. So you can see I'm just going back and forth between the two fences and you can see how it goes together. And I'll usually do the first one and put a clamp around it and see if all the seams are tight and to check to see whether my angle was right. Now the football is divided into four panels with a seam between each of the panels. So I cut some darker wood, I think this is Paduke, into very thin strips. Now these strips don't have any angle to them, but I can insert four of them into each ring and divide the rings into four sections. And this will become the seam running down the length of the football. I can glue up the rings and it's just a matter of getting glue into all of the seams. I think this was the first one I did. As I did more and more rings, I started to divide the ring into the four quadrants that it's already divided into, and I would glue the center segment in first on the four different quadrants, then put glue on each side of the thin seam piece and glue the four quadrants together. And that seemed to work pretty well as a gluing process. <laughs> then I can clamp everything together with a band clamp. Now the two rings at each end have to be solid in the center. And I didn't quite get all the points perfect on the center of those rings. So I made two plugs to go into those two rings. And I can use my new vertical table on the CNC machine. And I cut those plugs to fit into the hole made by my half inch drill bit. So I can drill out the hole for the rings on the drill press, which is a lot easier than trying to mount the small ring on the CNC table to cut the hole. Then I can glue the plugs in place. Now I can sand each side of each ring to get them ready to go together. And this is how they stack up. So in gluing this up, 
I was concerned with the seam between the rings, but also getting my darker, thin seam pieces to line up so that they would read as a continuous line on the finished football. The other way to do these seams would have been to have glued up the entire form without the little dark pieces, then cut the glued up ring of footballs into four quadrants and glued the seams in as one continuous piece. Doing it this way meant that my rings weren't staggered like a brick pattern. So the segments make a grid. And in gluing these up, I started by gluing them in pairs, then gluing those pairs together, then getting to where I had the two halves glued together. This means I have one seam at a time to worry about. The main form is done. <laughs> now I'll glue a block on the end so that I can hold it in the lathe a little bit easier. Now I need to start making the pieces that will make up the pattern on the football. So I'm going to start making the plug that goes around the stitching. And I glued up some more of the cherry pieces. And once that was one piece, I glued it down to a scrap piece of plywood. And this will let me hold it to the CNC table. So making the pattern in the football is going to be a process of cutting and then adding and cutting and adding. So I'm starting with the center or the, the base of the piece under the stitching. Then there's a seam that goes around that piece. So I will cut a hole in a piece of paduke the same wood that makes up the pattern in the rings. And I can cut my centerpiece free as it's cut now. Gluing it down to the board meant that I didn't have to make bridges on the sides of this piece that would have to be cut off. So this isn't necessarily an easier or better way to do it, it's just a different way to do it. <laughs> Now that piece can get glued into the hole that I cut in the paduk. Now I wanted to keep the paduk mounted to the CNC table in the same place. So I glued it on the CNC table. Now I can cut out that whole system with the little piece of paduk around the centerpiece. So I get that, that seam. That seam, I did have to use some bridges, so I had to sand those off. Now, I recently got a new fourth axis attachment for the CNC machine. And for this project, and I know this is going to frustrate some people, I'm just going to use it as a work holding setup. So it's sort of just a, a fancy vice. <laughs> but I can set up the round football and hold it in place with this while I cut into the side of the football. And I can get it aligned vertically. Now, if I'd done the process that I was describing earlier where I made the form of the football and then cut it into quadrants, I could then hold one of the halves down to the CNC table and do this without the fourth axis attachment. So I cut the hole for the piece that I just made earlier. Now here's where I made a giant screw up and I accidentally cut on the outside of my line instead of on the inside and I took out too much. I'm kind of amazed that the, the machine was able to cut full depth all the way around like this. It was a major screw up. I'd done all this work doing all these fine adjustments and all this studying and all this testing and then I'd just do a giant major like take a chainsaw to it kind of screw up. Well, I cut to the outside of the line and not to the inside of the line. So I completely screwed up the hole. So what I'm gonna do is build, build a patch and put that on this and then do the stitching for the football on the other side. So there'll be a patch on this side. So this is what that finishing pass should look like just taking off a few thousandths of an inch. <laughs> 
Now, because I wanted to do some more cutting on this location on the football, I didn't want to move the football. So I wanted to put the pieces in right where the football was in the lathe. So I put some support in under the football and I could then work on it without moving it and without running the risk of damaging the, the lathe or the chuck and the tailstock. Now to do the stitching, I got some Hollywood last spring from a neighbor and I measured it and it's down to about 10%, which is a little wet, but I'm gonna be using such small pieces, I think it'll be okay. And the thing that's nice about Holly is it's really white. It'll work well for the stitching on the football. Now I cut out the pieces for the stitching before I mounted the football on the lathe. So I used the, the vertical table to hold the piece on end. And I could cut the stitching pieces out of the side of the piece of holly. And I could cut those free. So now I can cut the holes for those pieces of stitching. So there's a long piece that runs the length of the football. And I can glue that in place. And I put this piece in first so that the shorter pieces that run perpendicular to that will feel like they go over this piece. So now I can cut the holes for those and glue those in place. Now, a thought that I had, and I know this is gonna be a suggestion. <laughs> I glued all these in place now and then turned everything flush. And the other way to, to have done it would be to turn it all flush and then cut these and put them in place so that they would stick up from the surface of the football. But I kind of like the idea of everything just being flush. So now I need to glue in my mistake on the other side. <laughs> I made a patch to go into the hole that I recut on the other side of the football. Now, I could have cut the shape of the football out on the CNC, and I think there'll be a lot of questions about why I didn't do that. <laughs> but because this is such a simple shape, the time spent setting it up would outweigh the time of just doing it by hand on the lathe. And I think I was a little spooked by making the mistake on my first cut into the, the body of the piece. And I didn't want to do that on an even grander scale on the fourth axis, on something that was simple enough to just do by hand. Now, I'm definitely going to do some projects on the fourth axis, but this one was easier to just do by hand. So I cut down the corners of the rings, and that actually got me pretty close to the football shape. Then I did very light passes, getting closer and closer to the final form. I think the real question isn't so much whether you're, you're doing a project on the CNC or doing it by hand or using power tools or using hand tools or whether one thing is cheating or not real or, or whatever. That's not really the question. The question that's much more interesting is how does the tools that you're using affect the project? I think that, that's the much more interesting thing to think about. Now I got closer and closer to the ends. Now I got it pretty smooth with the bowl gouge, but I went over it with the scraper and the scraper still gives me a much nicer finish. So I went over everything with the scraper and then started sanding. And the sanding on this was really easy because it's just a one simple shape. There's, there's no nooks and crannies to get into. There's no inside or outside to worry about. It's just a big round shape. <laughs> then I did more work on the ends. 
then sanded the ends. I wanted to do as much of this on the lathe as I could, as I was going to be doing the ends by hand off the lathe. This is where having a vacuum chuck on the lathe would be nice. That would be a nice way to hold a form like this with one end free of any support so that you could work on it. So it was at about the point where I couldn't do any more on the lathe. And I cut off what I could with the bandsaw. And then I just used the disc sander to shape the ends down to as close as I could get to the form of the point of the football. Then I sanded with the hand sander. And then it was time for finish. And it always makes it look really good. <laughs> I had a couple of catastrophes during this process, but it turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching.